Have you seen these Facebook groups where people try to identify mystery wood? It's basically like a voting system and half the time everyone's wrong. So stop guessing. I've put together a simple old school checklist that the pros have been using for decades to find wood species. I'm also going to show you a special test that makes only a certain type of wood glow. But first, let's start with what you can see right away. All right, here's the first thing you're going to want to look at color but here's the thing oxidation will make color change over time let me show you cherry starts out as a deep red pink but will turn into a pale reddish brown when exposed to sunlight purple heart is vibrant purple when you first cut it then eventually it turns dark brown so color gives you hints but it's not the final answer. Red oak and white oak can have the same grain pattern, but wildly different colors. However, Quercus alba, or the classic white oak, the true white oak, can be a lighter brown color with a little bit of a red tint to it, which can easily be mistaken for red oak. Color and grain orientation can sometimes be deceiving, but it's the main method that I use to identify wood, only because I get to see kiln-dried lumber every single day. And you can use the Google Lens on your phone, but this doesn't always work correctly. Keep that in mind. Cameras never do the wood justice. So how else can we identify wood species if color and wood grain are playing tricks on us? Some people sometimes use weight to help identify wood. For example, woods like soft maple and box elder are much lighter than hard maple or sugar maple. Ah, uh, now here's a sneaky little trick. Take a piece of wood and press your fingernail into it. Does it dent? There's a subtle yet distinct difference between soft maple and hard maple when you press your finger into the wood. Hard maple ain't gonna make a dent, but the soft Soft maple, they'll have a small little tiny dent. And here's something most people don't know. Words like soft and hard has nothing to do with how hard the wood is. It's about the seeds. Now, hardwoods have protected seeds like fruits or nuts, and they have pores. Soft would have naked seeds like cones, and they don't have pores at all. They use different cells called tracheids to move water and nutrients. We'll talk all about pores and tracheids later on. They're gonna play a big part in identifying wood species. But color and weight alone aren't gonna help those Facebook keyboard experts in helping you to identify that tricky wood species. Hang in there, bud. I got a few tricks up my sleeve for you. Now, before we get into the checklist that the pros use, I wanna take a look at some of the X factors. These are the secret weapons that most woodworkers never think to use. Number three, smell. Wood doesn't just look different, it smells different. And I mean really different. Apparently sassafras smells like root beer. Spanish cedar smells like a cigar box. Really, many of those cedars or junipers have that distinct smell that's unmistakable. If you've ever walked into a cedar closet or looked into your grandma's cedar chest, then you know what I'm talking about. Black walnut has an earthy smell, almost like dirt, and red oak has a weird musty smell. And some people relate to vinegar mixed with a wet dog smell. I hear zebra wood smells like animal waste when you're working with it. But here's my favorite party trick that I mentioned earlier in the video. Some woods actually glow under a black light. Check this out. I got a bunch of random woods here, nothing happens. Just a regular old black light. But you take a piece of black locust, and the bad boy glows bright green under the black light. Ain't that cool? Water gladitia glows under black light as well. I'll put a QR code right here for this black light that I'm using, and I'll also link it in the description below. And then there's chemical tests. Woods like oak, walnut, and cherry will react with iron. Put a wet nail on oak, and it'll turn black. We're gonna wet down this iron bolt, set it on this uh, chunk of white oak, and watch it react with the tannins. I realize that I have left the bolt on this piece of wood here overnight and check it out. After it's dried out and everything, it left that mark there on the wood. So this test actually works. It just takes a while. There's even a sketchy chemical that turns white oak very dark, but doesn't do anything to red oak. We experimented with this chemical in a previous video. We're gonna tell you all about it later on, stick around. But even with all these tips and tricks, there's really only one place where the real answer lies, and that's at the end of your board. Well, this is it. The pro's way of doing it is by looking at the end grain. Oh, this is the most reliable way as it looks at the tree's vascular system to identify the wood species. It's like looking at the tree's DNA or its fingerprint. First, you're gonna need to prep it right. Regardless if it's rough sawn or kiln dried, you're gonna wanna go over to your chop saw and make a fresh cut off the end grain. And then you can add water to the end grain to really make the end grain pop. Now, look at the pores. These are the little tiny holes that carried the water all the way up the tree, and they fall into three main categories. Number one is ring porous woods. Ring porous woods 
roads have large pores in the wood formed in the spring as shown here, followed by smaller pores in the summer. And all of this makes up one ring of growth as you can see here. Now that I think of it, some of you older fellas are gonna need your cheater glasses here. <laughs> Ah, sorry. Some ring porous woods include white oak, ash, red oak, hickory, some pecan, locust, hackberry, sassafras, and elm, to name a few. Now, diffuse porous woods. They have pores that are roughly the same size, scattered evenly throughout the growth rate. No patterns, just dots everywhere. Some species included are all of those that are in the maple family, poplar, aspen, alder, mahogany, cottonwood, and some cherry species, basswood, beech, sycamore, and birch are all diffuse porous woods. Now, semi-ring porous woods are the woods that are in between. The pores start big, but gradually get smaller from the inside of the ring to the outside. Walnut, black cherry, pecan, persimmon, and butternut are all classic examples of semi-ring porous wood. Some woods have something called tyloses. Now these are bubble-like outgrowths that clog these pores that we're talking about. I'm sure you've heard this before, but if you haven't, you're in for a ride. White oak is packed with tyloses. That's why they use it to make whiskey barrels because it's basically airtight. And if it's airtight, it's watertight. And if it's watertight, it's rot resistant for the most part. It's one of the main reasons why I think white oak makes a great choice for outdoor wood projects. And red oak doesn't have them. And that means you can literally blow air through a 12 inch piece of white oak like it's a straw. I'm not kidding. This is the bubble test that old timers have used for decades to determine whether they're holding white oak or red oak. Put one end of a red oak board into soapy water and blow into the other end you'll see air bubbles. Try that with white oak and nothing happens. So looking at them from the end grain, you'll see that the red oak has these wide open pores like this. And white oak has larger pores. However, these large pores are blocked by the white tyloses that you see right here. But there's more to see in the end grain, my friend. These pores aren't just scattered randomly. They have arrangements. And these arrangements can be subtle clues to tell you what you're looking at. I know it's tough to see these wood patterns close up, but you can always take a picture and zoom in or Get this, get this, check this out. You can buy yourself a jeweler's loop like this right here and get yourself a closer look. Regardless of if you have a suspicion of what type of wood it is, you can take a picture of it with your Google Lens, see what Google says it might be. Then you can head over to wood-database.com. I'll put the link in the description and you can compare the end grain of the wood that you have with some of the end grains that are on that website. I got this for you. Well, for me, but. A lead loop. Oh, look at you. LED loop LED so now you can see things <laughs> oh yeah now, those threads on that bolt are a little beat up there Kyle I think you probably should have maybe picked a little better one that's actually a really good magnifying glass interesting I can't believe this actually works yeah now I know where the medullary rays come from in quarter sawn wood I can see it now yep look at that yep they go right through the growth ring pores Go ahead and scan this with your phone and you can purchase that same uh, jeweler's loop that Kendall is um, using to check out the end grain of wood there. I'll also link it in the description below. But remember, we earn a small commission off of anything you buy using one of our codes and you're helping us at no extra cost to you by doing this. So thanks in advance. And this is where you can match your woods with other woods that have already been identified. Just check the end grain and match it with a species that you think it might already be and bam, you got it. And sometimes the types of pores can be a dead giveaway too. It might help you to know these as well. And bear with me here. I'm gonna try to keep this simple and quick. Are the holes standing all by themselves? themselves those are solitary pores are they stacked in a straight line next to each other those are multiples are they huddling together like a bunch of grapes those are clusters and each one of them is like a fingerprint that'll help you narrow down which type of wood you're looking at if you see them arranged in a wavy line like wings this is called ulmiform lines and this only happens in elm or hackberry no other wood does this. Now look closely around the holes. Do you see a light colored halo or faint white lines? Those are just storage cells, but their shape is like a fingerprint. We won't get into those today, but no, just knowing those will put you ahead of 90% of the other guys on Facebook. And before we get into how to use all this information, how the pros do it, I want to talk quickly about softwoods. They're an entirely different ballpark, my friends. If it's a softwood, you won't see any pores at all. Instead, you'll see a group of tightly packed cells 
called tracheids. Look for tiny white or dark dots that are scattered across the end grain of any softwood you suspect. These are the resin canals where the trees store their sap. If you do see them, then you've narrowed them down to pine, spruce, larch, or Douglas fir. But if you don't see them, then it's likely cedar, true fir, hemlock, or yew. Now look at the transition between the early wood, the lighter color rings, and the late wood, the darker colored rings. If the transition is abrupt or sharp, then you're likely looking at Douglas fir, or it could be southern yellow pine. If the transition is a little more gradual, then it's probably white pine or cedar. Now back to the hardwoods. I'm over here in the hardwoods section of our kiln dried warehouse, just so I could show you one thing. This right here is medullary maize. They move nutrients horizontally from the center of the tree to the bark. Most woodworkers already know about this cheat code for some species. In some woods like maple, the rays are invisible to the naked eye. In species like white oak and red oak, they're massive. It's a dead giveaway. This is a face sound board, but when you flip it over and look at the side grain, you could see the medullary rays plain as day. This will help you tell the difference between oak and ash or really any other species for that matter. That's what creates the ray fleck or the tiger pattern that you see in craftsman style furniture. All right, here's how you're gonna use all of this. This is your step-by-step -step system. Step one, Preparation. Use your miter saw or chop saw and cut a clean end. You can even sand the end grain to 400 grit and make sure to apply water to really make that grain pop like we talked about earlier in the video. Step two, observation. Look at the pores. Is it ring porous, diffuse porous, or semi-ring porous? That right there immediately narrows down most of your options. Step three, magnification. Make sure to grab your jeweler's loop. Are there tyloses in the pores? Is there medullary rays? Are the rays wide and narrow? What's the pore arrangement? Is there parenchyma? There's a lot of fancy pants questions you can ask. Step four, elimination. Check and feel the weight. Is it heavy, is it light? Press your fingernail into the wood. Does it leave a mark? Give it a sniff. Each clue eliminates the possibilities. Step five, confirmation. Check for X factors. Does it glow under UV light? Does it have the rays when it's quarter sawn? If it's black cherry, it could have those tiny black gum streaks. And here's a bonus fact. If you split a black walnut branch lengthwise, it looks kind of like a tiny honeycomb like this. No other hardwood does this. This isn't guessing anymore. This is a system. Every step, every clue brings you closer. And the more that you practice it, the better you'll get, but you gotta practice. Now, I wanna show you something that you've probably never seen before. Earlier in the video, I mentioned a dangerous chemical to identify a wood species. And after taking great strides just to be able to obtain this chemical right here, we show you how we use this to identify a certain wood species in this video right here. We'll see you there, brother and sister. Don't you, don't you cancel me, don't you cancel me. Where, 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 where did we go? Where did we go?